In this video, you're gonna learn everything you need to know about the new SVD Marksman rifle, like its base stats, how to properly mod it. Is the baked in talent any good? And the big question, is this weapon better than the M1A? Stick around. The SVD is a Soviet-designed marksman rifle that first saw production back in 1963. It's a semi-automatic weapon that's name literally translates from Russian into self-loading rifle system of Dragunov model of the year 1963, which is already a pretty awesome way to name a weapon if you ask me. The SVD is less a sniper rifle than it is a designated marksman rifle. The difference being that the individual using this weapon is designed to be out in the field with a squad rather than camping in a sniper's nest. The SVD is a lightweight and accurate weapon that's designed for use at medium rather than longer ranges. Interestingly enough, the Soviets designated their marksmen by way of a test, which was that soldiers should have a 50% probability of hitting a standing man-sized target at 800 meters or 875 yards, and an 80% probability of hitting a man-sized target at 500 meters or 547 yards. Passing this test would sometimes see you made a designated marksman and if you were made one of those, you were probably given an SVD to use as your primary weapon. In the division, the real life spirit of the SVD is realized perfectly, as the very short optimal range of this weapon and the low per bullet damage and the incredibly high accuracy and stability make this weapon perform much more like a battle rifle than a sniper rifle. The SVD excels in medium range combat, being particularly good at firing off quick shots in the heat of combat due to its very high rate of fire. Within the marksman rifle category, the SVD finds a unique and effective niche so long as you know how to properly configure and use this weapon. So let's take a quick look at the base stats for this weapon. The SVD comes in two variants, the Paratrooper and the Surplus, but both are identical from a stats and mods perspective. At 229 gear score, the SVD rolls at a max base damage of 17,580, which is about 2k more damage than the utterly useless Scar H class of Marksman Rifle, and about 10k less than the M1 1A, and around 17k less than the M44. This makes the SVD the second lowest damage per bullet marksman rifle currently available in the game. In terms of RPM, the SVD fires at a rate of 260 RPM, which is roughly on par with the SCAR H and slower than the M1A's 300 RPM. So the SVD is clearly a fast rate of fire marksman rifle. In terms of its magazine, the SVD sports 10 bullets in its base mag, which is the same as the M1A and 10 bullets less than the SCAR HS20. You can fire fast, but the overall throughput of this weapon is capped by its smaller magazine size. Finally, its reload speed is pretty unremarkable, being some 2.3 seconds, which puts it ever so slightly faster than the M1A and the SCAR, but the difference is so small that you really won't notice it. What you also probably won't notice, and one of the things that really sets this marksman rifle apart in the, in the marksman rifle category, is its optimal range. We are very used to having our marksman rifles work at the 60 meter mark, which is the optimal range of both the M1A and the M44. The SVD has an optimal range of 34 meters, which is roughly the same optimal range as many types of LMGs and the new G36 assault rifle. To get a sense for how far this is, the furthest target from you in the gun range is 28 meters away. So add six meters to that to arrive at the optimal range for the SVD. So this already puts the weapon in a very different place. And as you use it, you need to be aware of how much DPS you are giving up when the optimal range DPS drop-off begins to kick in. You're probably thinking that it might be useful to use an optimal range mod to bring your total optimal range to around 41 meters. And to be honest, Honest, you may be right, but it really depends on the circumstances. In the dark zone, for instance, a large number of encounters can occur up to or beyond 41 meters, especially in the wide open spaces of DZ6. In the underground, however, things are typically a lot more close quarters, so you can probably get away with a much smaller range on this weapon. My advice? Mod it for optimal range only when you get a very clear sense that the content that you are doing is going to necessitate that optimal range. But the defining characteristic of this weapon is its accuracy. It has a base accuracy of 74, which looks something like this firing.
Compare that to the recently nerfed M1A reticle with its base accuracy of 69, which looks something like this. So already we can tell that the numbers that we see on these bars are actually pretty damn useless. There's only a difference of five accuracy there, but there sure as hell is not an, a difference of like 5% in terms of reticle bloom there. You can see there's a gigantic difference here. The SVD reticle really doesn't move for those first three or four shots and will only start to bloom heavily after that point, where the M1A will begin immediately blooming and become completely unmanageable after that first bullet unless you slow down your fire. Of course, this view of things is naked, that is to say, no mods on the weapon. So let's talk about how to mod both the SVD and the M1A for maximum headshot effectiveness, and then we can compare what we think is the better one based on performance. Well, with the SVD, it's pretty damn simple. With two accuracy mods, one on the scope and another on the muzzle, we hit around 87 accuracy, which puts the reticle to the point where it really does not move at all. We get a slight amount of bloom towards the end of our magazine, but really not enough that we can't handle it. In my view, maxing out the accuracy on both an SVD and your M1A is absolutely paramount, since these weapons are very much based around their rate of fire, so be sure to do this. Alternatively, you can roll accurate on your SVD, and this will bring you to the point where your reticle is automatically maxed out without having to use any mods whatsoever, which means all those points that you are putting into accuracy can be put into other things like crit chance or stability or whatever you like. On the point of stability, I'd go for a mix of horizontal stability and straight up stability. And if you're interested in the topic of stability, I've linked a video in the description below, which I really recommend you check out. I just, I explain absolutely everything that you need to know about how stability works in the division. So when you put both horizontal stability and stability on this thing, you eventually arrive at what I would essentially con uh, consider balanced 3.0. A marksman rifle with no reticle movement and no recoil. It's basically, you know, this thing shoots where I point it, no matter how long I keep firing. In this way, I'm able to achieve a huge percentage of accuracy and an extremely high rate of fire. I'm essentially firing at 100% fire rate of 260 RPM, or roughly four bullets a second for a total per second damage of roughly 70K if we look at base weapon damage only. But what about the M1A? What kind of accuracy and stability can we achieve with that thing post the M1A being nerfed? Well, first of all, we need to be clear that there are in fact two types of M1A. There are those with capable and those without it. So let's deal with the non-capable M1As first. The bad news is that the, uh, the M1A nerf hit it quite hard. Having used an M1A extensively over the life of the game, I'd say that the increased reticle bloom has reduced the M1A's rate of fire by about 30% before you mod for accuracy. And when you do mod for, ac for accuracy, I think the reduction is about the same. In patch 1.2, I could very comfortably land three headshots inside a second with an accuracy modded M1A but that has since shifted to what I believe is around two headshots per second. If I go for a third, I'm really gonna have to slow down a lot on that next second, and I may only be able to land one headshot in that time. So even though the M1A lists a rate of fire of 300 RPM, I can really only land two headshots per second, bringing its damage to roughly 52K using base damage values. At this point, this puts the SVD ahead of the M1A in terms of total damage output based on accuracy. I will say that if you were lucky enough to get an accurate M1A and it has the talent accurate, you're probably going to get at least one more bullet per second out of the M1A which is then obviously going to increase its DPS significantly. That extra one bullet per second will, let, will net you a sort of, you know, an extra 27K or so, which will actually bring it up to par with the SVD. So the SVD, if you remember a second ago, was dealing 70K damage per second, uh, based upon, you know, based on being able to fire four bullets a second. And if the M1A can fire three bullets, it's gonna be doing, you know, roughly 70 to 80K. So the damage between the two of these is actually pretty much equal so long as you have yourself an accurate M1A. The dark horse in all of this, of course, is Capable, which I'm happy to report is still alive and well. For those of you that don't know, Capable is a talent, which uh, when you use an ability for the next sort of 13 seconds, you get a significantly increased weapon handling, so stability and accuracy on your weapon. You essentially have like the original balanced effective 
on your M1A for that time. It has seen a slight nerf, but it still retains about 95% of its power. With an accuracy modded M1A and capable and 30k skill power allowing me to use this, uh, an ability every 13 seconds, I can maintain full rate of fire or five bullets per second for a total damage per second of around 125k. So what's the takeaway from all this then? Well, essentially the SVD is better than the M1A unless you have an accurate M1A, at which point the SVD and the M1A are about the same. Things change significantly if you have a capable M1A and you run a skill power build with at least 30K skill power, at which point the M1A is about 80% more powerful than the SVD. This just goes to show you how potent the capable talent is on an M1A, even post the M1A being nerfed and capable being nerfed. It's why hybrid builds using five piece century and savage gloves are still the unquestionable, unparalleled highest DPS build in the game, even in patch 1.3. A capable M1A breaks all the rules of DPS and continues to do so, even with the excellent SVD doing the rounds. Of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't spend some time talking about uh, the SVD's unique talent, which is baked into every weapon, decisive. This talent will always be on any new SVD you get, but you can roll it away with recalibration. And since it's in that third slot, you know, whatever places it should be free unless that bugs out for you, which can happen. So is this talent any good? Well, the answer to that question is a resounding no. Two things stop this talent from being useful to us. Firstly, we need to land the killing blow in order to proc this talent, something we cannot always do, especially when we're in a group. It's a big problem with a lot of talents actually, but that's a discussion for another day. Secondly, we are not building for critical hit damage when we are using a marksman rifle. We build entirely for headshot damage, accuracy, and stability. You're typically going to be running very low amounts of critical hit damage when you're using a marksman rifle, meaning that yes, crits are nice and they help, but you're far better off running a talent that will consistently increase your DPS by a large margin, such as, you know, destructive in PvE or brutal in PvE and PvP, rather than a talent that may sometimes increase your DPS by a relatively small amount. So where does the SVD fit into the overall meta? Well, first of all, let me say, don't try and use this thing in PvP. It just doesn't hit hard enough. If you're going to use a marksman rifle in PvP, then use an M44 and pair it with explosive rounds. In PvE, if you're going to be using this thing, then I'd seriously recommend pairing it with Century's Call. In my view, this gun combined with the, the recent buff to shotguns and the utterly ridiculous increase in enemy health at level 35 has pushed Century's Call to the very top of the meta pile. Anyone asking me what set they should be running at the moment, I unquestionably say Century's Call, which really pains me because I've been very vocal about how much I do not like the design of this set, given that all it does is just give you more stats and it gives you far, far too much of them. I have to face reality, however, and say that Massive have absolutely got enemy health wrong in patch 1.3. And overall power is just completely out of whack during this expansion. And as such, being able to stack on an extra 52% damage for both you and your team with Century using this weapon is just like fantastic for your group. The SVD's exceptional accuracy, stability, and rate of fire make it the perfect weapon to quickly apply these crucial century stacks to make enemy health much more manageable in both PvE and PvP if you wanted to go down that path. But I digress. Overall, the SVD is a very, very solid weapon and an excellent addition to the overall arsenal. It's straight up better than the M1A when it's properly modded, unless the M1A has accurate, at which point they're the same, and unless the M1A has capable, in which and you and you're able to maintain 100% uptime on capable, in which case the M1A still crushes absolutely everything. The first class accuracy and stability make the SVD an absolute pleasure to be to, to fire, but make sure you check the range of your target since the optimal range is a lot lower than you're used to. For best results, pair it with Century's Call and Savage Gloves and you'll wonder what all the G36 fuss is about as you'll cut through level 35 enemies as though they were properly balanced targets instead of the heinous nine vulnerable meat sacks that they are today. And that's it from me, guys. My first new weapon review is down. Uh, well, after Showstopper, that is, but that's kind of a little bit different. Um, I'm planning to do a review on the new PP19 SMG and the X45 pistol in the future, as well as the G36 after it cops its nerf. Uh, you know, but they'll come in the next little while, as you may be able to tell, these videos actually do take quite a long while to put together. Um, if you're looking forward to that, then please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Um, and if you like this video, then please 
please do drop it a like as it actually helps grow my channel. Um, finally, you can actually help me go full time on YouTube if you like. That's a goal that I have um, by whitelisting me on your ad blocker if you happen to run ad blocker. Um, but of course, only if you think my content is worth it. For now, guys, this is Skill Up signing off. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time as always. Take good care and I'll see you in the dark zone. Bye bye.